In this video, we're gonna look at breaking down that lucrative first trading hour. One for you day traders, stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. So the first trading hour, you either love it or you hate it. You got a big crowd of people say, hey, stay away from it. The others who say, you know what? It's my bread and butter, it's where I make my money. I think it's a good opportunity to trade. Personally, if it's not for you, stay clear. Or maybe look at this and try and look at it and break it down as I've done in this, I'm gonna do this video into different segments. So you look at it rather than the first hour of trade, you kind of break it up and think of it in different chunks. Okay, so let's have a look. I've used the example here of the Dow open from a UK perspective. So UK, the Dow opens at 2.30. You could change this if you're in the UK or Europe to your specific trading time open, whether you're trading the European markets like DAX or the FTSE, that'll be eight o'clock for me, but I'm just, just adjust it to how it suits you. If you're in the East Coast, it's obviously going to be 9.30. Whatever. You understand that the, that is the opening bell for whatever market we're trading. All right, we've got that clear. Okay. So I segmented that into four distinct segments. And bear in mind, guys, this actually changes. These segments changes depending on the volatility, the current market conditions. Often these will be more segments. You'll find extra things coming in. Or when it goes slow, these kind of blend into one a little bit. But this is generally a good starting point. So segment number one is that opening bell for the first five minutes. The first five minutes is often very crazy. Right, the first five minutes, I'm just gonna put the five minutes here. <clears throat> if you're looking at a five minute candlestick chart, you're gonna see, you know, candles ripping up, ripping down. It's often quite noisy. You know, you get a lot of people just piling in orders. There's generally, unless there's a big consensus, maybe there's a big gap, it's generally kind of just orders coming in, orders are open, just hitting the market. And you'll get kind of big spikes in one direction, big spikes back. Uh, and it's a little bit grubby, gen to be a bit grubby. However, if it's not, you get a clear candle, it can set you up for a trade afterwards. We'll talk about that in a second. But generally, I think the first five minutes for most people, under most conditions, I'm gonna say it's loosely because it's not always, is probably best to just step, step aside for five minutes. Just spend that time focusing. What is happening? Where are we? What's going on? Do we have a clear kind of drive happening on the candle? Or are we having a drive uh, that's fading and we've kind of almost got a doji type scenario where we've got a bit of indecision? How big is that first five minute range? How big does it relate to normal? You can start to get a little bit of a picture of potentially what's gonna happen. And it's worth sacrificing potentially, you know, some profit in that first five minutes to give you a much more of a better head start after that first five minutes. <clears throat> so then, segment two, 2.35 to 2.55. This is when we get the initial drive and generally we'll get a solid move. Uh, not always, obviously, and I'm, you've got to appreciate I'm just generalizing here a little bit. If every day was the same, we'd probably all be billionaires, but it's not. So we have that initial drive and solid move. So we get the first five minute candle and then maybe people start to now see a bit of supply demand imbalance. Rather than that constant supply demand imbalance shifting, we start to see maybe that more buyers step in, more sellers step in. Perhaps we start to break that high, start to chug. You could now start to look for a trade. You framed it based on that first five minute candle. You can now start to say, okay, well, we're starting to plot on a little bit here. We've, we've taken out that high as if it was nothing. It's a relevant print. It was only the first five minute print. No one's that Matt bothered about it or people are bothered about it, however it looks. Maybe now I'm gonna take a long position. And obviously guys, we're not, let me just re, let me just iterate this. We're not taking a position based just on we see there. This is something that we've planned before, i.e. we've looked at the, we've got our plan for the day and we say, hey, we wanna align ourselves with the long and for whatever reason, our target is X. I wanna see reasons go long. So perhaps we do see this kind of, even if it's a red candle, starts to change, starts to curl back up, starts to see strength. We take our long, we can frame our trade based on the width of that five minute candle. The point is it's, utilizing our existing plan, but with the current conditions at the open and using it to adapt on the fly a little bit. Okay, so that first 20 minutes, the initial drive, we get generally a solid move. If we don't, that's normally a warning sign that if we're chopping around still in that first kind of 25 minute period, probably need to just be very, very cautious about getting chopped up. 
uh, you know, been there myself, where you've kind of thought this trading, you're getting chopped about a little bit, and it sets a bad tone for the day. Don't forget, this is only the first hour of the day. You've got the whole of the day. You might get some really good action later in the day. There's the close. The close could make up for a beautiful day for you. You, know, you don't need to trade in that. And if it looks choppy and grubby and volume's low, and I what I call dirty candlesticks, i.e. some red, some green, some small, some big, and you don't really get that clean pattern, just stay away from it. But if you start to get a clean pattern, then you can look a little bit more closely. Then we've got this kind of unusual period of, of a five to three to 10 past three or five past three, depending on how you look at it. And this is where you often get a reversal. Okay, you often get a reversal. Now, there are some days you've got to watch out that you have data coming out at three o'clock. Um, you know, we have often data coming out regularly for all sorts of different things, you know, you know all about that. Um, so you've got to watch out for that. You know, as we come to that, people might start to just kind of wait and you might get the pause. So if you're in a trade on that initial drive, consider kind of closing the position ready for data. Five two is about the sort of time, or maybe the book starts to go a bit thin if it's a very important piece of data. And also, if you haven't got data, you've got this potential reversal. So very often, often you'll get a, a, a final spike and then it will reverse because a lot of people for whatever reason algos or whatever start to come in and get involved in that three o'clock time and drive it another way or it gets a bit of a boost and carries on the same direction so very often you'll get this you, know, you get the first kind of uh, first 30 minutes doing that and then the actual hour strikes and then it really starts to kick in. So a little clue for you is to look for a big initial candle move. If you want to go down to a one minute just for that then fine just to see is there an initial move and then maybe trade in the direction of the initial kind of trend and the impulse at three o'clock when the algos might be kicking in and then obviously aligning with a broader thesis that you've got. So watch out for that and also watch out for this potential reversal which you know you often will get a kick in there against the direction and then you can frame it and say well do I want to take a short that I've already pre kind of arranged if you like uh, below the low do I want to you know trade on that head fake where it's just going to go through the high on that first uh, after the first 30 minutes and then drive lower you know you can start to position the point is is you're looking for something to happen in that area and obviously aligning with your prior trading plan or a plan that you've adapted as that opens okay finally this 10 past three to half past three time period is when you get these little mini trends. And this is the kind of sweet spot, if you like, when things are all lined up nicely, you'll get a trend. Because now you see a lot of institutions and algos will be very cautious in that first 30 minutes because it's a bit grubby and they don't want to get caught out. And if they're kind of executing over the period of the day and they're time slicing their algo or they're volume slicing their algo, they're going to wait. And so this kind of when we start to potentially get the trend of the day, uh, this might this early one, two, three segment might give us a clue as to what this trend might be. And then it's, that's one of the most powerful. You've got this not very noisy moving one direction, bit of a pause. Then you get that three o'clock algo coming in. And then it's sort of 10 past three. It starts to calm and starts to chug. Now you can start looking for that first pullback trade. Now you can start to look for that, you know, something to align yourself with the mini trend. And by now, you're going to know whether you want to be involved in it or not. If this is all noisy and choppy and horrible and grubby and not very clean and you know, not, not a lot going on, and it's kind of oscillating around, not very much range, you're not even going to bother with that. You're going to say, well, you know what, I'm going to put my print up here, print up here, and I want to see if either of those levels broken, I might get interested in it. Otherwise, I'm going to look elsewhere. I'm not going to trade it. So four distinct segments for you guys when you are trading the first uh, hour of the day. So if you're trading the stocks, if you're trading the indices, etc., cetera, are worth looking at. This is my interpretation. Obviously, stick yours in the comment section below. I'd be interested to know what you guys think about that and how you adjust it. This changes over time. As I say, sometimes you can tweak it and adjust it and say, well, that's a remove that because we're so volatile in the morning or add that to that and you play around with it. But I think it pays importantly. What is the kind of takeaway from this video is that it pays to think of that first hour in, in distinct different segments. So you have an idea of what's going on. And a quick final thing is just to go look at your charts. Go look at the charts when you're watching this video, go have a look at the current last week, what's happened in that first hour print it off, and can you kind of dissect it in specific segments? Maybe this time is slightly different, but you can see a pattern of, hey, we've got a bit of chop here, then we see a bit of a drive, and you can utilize that pattern to make better trades moving forward. All right, guys, uh, thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet already to the channel. Appreciate your support if you're a subscriber already. Uh, good trading, keep the risk managed. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.